Hello, I'm Brita, webmistress of the dark. Today I'm going to show you how to make easier eerie eyeballs. I have been making the same recipe for years for my own parties, but I've been multitasking the whole time while making them, so I never realized how long it actually took to mix up the goop until I filmed it for the last video. So, after I filmed that, I went, boy, this is really, really, really taking a long time. There's got to be a way to make it easier. So I started tinkering with it, and I took some lessons I learned from the Bizarre Brain Pate, and, and made a new recipe. So let's show you how that works. First we're going to bloom our gelatin. If you're using plain powdered gelatin without any sugar in it, you should bloom it in water first. The water should be slightly warm, but not hot. And you just go ahead and sprinkle it in, both packets and stir it in so it doesn't fit in this big clumps there. Sometimes it helps to get the water moving first as you're sprinkling it in. There, just stir it gently and let that sit. The gelatin powder will absorb the water and it'll become this gooey mixture that then we'll put into our into our goop. So to start the goop we're going to take one eight ounce brick of cream cheese right here. Stick it straight in. We're not even using a double boiler this time because none of this is going to scorch. We're good. So I'm going to break it up a bit so it's going to melt easier and I'm going to turn it to medium on the burner. So we're going to start getting that warm. So here's the cream cheese in the pot. I've got it chopped up a bit so it's going to melt easier. And next I'll be adding the marshmallow cream. We're going to add marshmallow cream, which is easier to use than the marshmallows because it's already liquefied and not in solid shape. So it's easier to incorporate into the cream cheese. You can still use mini marshmallows, but they will take longer to dissolve from their solid shape into the goop you need. So we're going to use all of the marshmallow cream so I'm not worried about a different utensil. Just going to clean the jar and save it for later. So take all the sticky stuff and put it in with the cream cheese so it can all melt together. There's our goop in process. So now the cheese is already melting pretty good there. Now we add the marshmallow cream to it. It needs to get as warm as the cheese. But it's already <laughs> a lot smoother than the original eyeball recipe was. There, it's almost all the way incorporated already. Told you it was easier. Make sure there's no lumps of marshmallow. It's looking pretty good there. Now next we add the gelatin in. Now see how it's gone goopy? This is just one cup of water but two full powdered packets of gelatin. So I'm going to put this in here. And start stirring it all in. We want to do this while it's still warm. We're still over active heat right now, but as soon as we get this mixed in, we're going to turn it off the heat. Don't worry that it's runnier than the original eyeball recipe. It's still going to set up okay. Now we have one cup of pineapple juice. And that goes straight in as we turn off the heat. You'll also notice this is a lot paler mixture than trying to use the lemon jello that comes out very yellow. This has a lot more plain white versus the pineapple juice, so it turns out a less jaundiced eyeball. <laughs> okay, see? I'll incorporate, oh, I've got a, little, a couple little chunks. I think that's more left over from my spatula here than what's in the mixture. 
There. Already done with the goop. So much faster. Now we're ready to put it in the molds. Now that the goop is completely mixed and blended together, now we're going to oil our molds with non-stick cooking spray. These are the same molds, they're truffle chocolate molds that are just, you can see they're just a little half dome and these have a little swirl on the top which is perfect for the cornea shape. So I got these for a dollar or two at my local craft store that has a candy section and I just bought a couple each time they were on sale with coupon and I have quite a collection now. More than enough for all my eyeballs. That is definitely the easiest way to make these eyeballs. You can use the melon baller method, but this is a lot easier. So we're gonna just squirt in each hole. Just a little squirt. You don't want too much oil sticking, I mean pooling. You don't want too much oil pooling in the bottom. Looks good. So here we go, we just spooned into the molds. All the way to the top. Don't worry so much if it spills, because you can always wipe that up while it's setting. You can see it's very runny, but you do have two whole packets of gelatin in there that have not started setting yet. So when I made them, they came out just right. Squishy like eyeballs, but not too chewy. I think that's because the pineapple juice actually works against the gelatin. So it makes it softer texture. So I'm gonna finish filling all these up. Notice that I have them on a tray. That makes it easier to carry and put them in and out of the fridge without spilling your goop all over. I find that's much easier. You of course can put in each individual tray in your fridge instead. They do need to set up in cold. So they definitely need to be in the refrigerator, but don't put them in the freezer because the um, water in the mixture will freeze into ice and that will actually puncture your gel. So I'll go ahead and finish these and then come back. Okay, I've filled my molds. Now we're ready to put these in the fridge and let them sit overnight. You'll notice I have a lot of goop left over here. Uh, this usually makes about nine dozen eyeballs, which is a lot even for my parties. One other thing that's easier about this recipe is it's a lot easier to make smaller portions of it. Since it uses two packets of gelatin, you can easily cut the whole recipe in half using one packet. Use half of everything else, half a jar, half a block of cream cheese, half a cup of pineapple juice. So you can make a, a more limited quantity of eyeballs so you're not drowning in eyeballs. <laughs> So after these sit overnight in the fridge, then we'll go ahead and unmold them and decorate them. Here we have our eyeballs all set up overnight in the fridge. They've gelled very nicely. So that runny goop that you saw before we put them in the mold, it's hardened perfectly to eyeball texture. After we unmold them, we're going to decorate them to actually look like eyeballs. I wanted to show you some of this. This is my Black food coloring. I use this much. <laughs> I use a lot every Halloween until I found the big containers instead of these little containers of the gel food coloring. I snapped up the chance to buy a couple big bottles so I have some for a while. So I use blue for my irises for my eyeballs because one thing, it's easier to just use one color and you don't have to rinse out your brush to change colors. But there's some reality involved because when we would dissect cow's eyes, when my mom was a teacher, when she'd bring home all the eyeballs that had been frozen in a big bucket that we had to thaw in the fridge, all those cow's eyes were blue even though when the cows were alive the eyes were brown. So after they freeze the melanin dissipates and you get blue eyes. So that's my story and I'm sticking to it. We have a little bit of water. I'll show you how we're going to decorate later, but let's first unmold some of these here. To unmold the eyeballs, you want to gently make sure the edges are 
free from the mold because sometimes the very top edge will stick. I just use my fingernails to gently, so you start, you see it start to slide there, and you know it's ready to slide on out and put in your tray. So you just keep going like that until all the eyeballs are out and ready to be painted. And set it directly on the serving tray. It's much easier if you're not going to move them after they've been painted. Nice and squishy. Now that all the eyeballs have been unmolded and arranged on the serving tray, and I've washed my hands from all the sticky goop that was on them, we're ready to paint. So you still need a very fine tipped watercolor brush that has a nice soft bristles so that you don't rip the surface of the gelatin. Take that in some water so you can water down your blue food coloring so it's not so dark and lay out a good layer spread out here. Now this is our new trick. This is a piping tip for decorating icing. It's what you stick on the end of the bag and you, this is just a writing tip. It doesn't matter which kind you use because you're using the back for this. See this nice open hole? It's the perfect size to mark this outer circle of your iris. So dip that into the blue food coloring you just spread out. Make sure it's loaded up really good. And now set it on to your eyeball here, centered and gently make contact and give it a little twist. There you have the ring. Now, make sure you have enough paint on your brush. Go ahead and drag the iris effect from the outer edge inward to the pupil. Make that how you like it. I would still recommend doing the brush strokes immediately after the circle in case you've got any globs of blue stuck around so you can spread them out. So here I've taken a metal pen. The end is just a perfect flat circle and I've washed this thoroughly so that it's food safe. Then I take that and I plop the end into straight into the black food coloring because I want this as dark as possible. Spread it around, make sure you got the whole tip covered without uh, having any globs around the edges. And then take that directly down on the center for the pupil, the steady hand. Gently make contact and give it a little twist for good coverage there. And sometimes you might have a little hole in your eyeball, but that's okay. And voila! An easier, eerie eyeball. There we go. The last pupil is on. These were definitely easier to paint this time using those new tricks. If you have some spots that don't get full black coverage with the pen trick, you can go back and do some touch up with the brush, but that depends on how much it matters to you. The easier eerie eyeballs. I hope this inspires you to make your own for your Halloween party. I hope you've enjoyed watching today. For more recipes and projects like this, you can buy my book, Enhanced Eerie Elegance. Happy haunting!